Hi, I'm Dr. Michael Arata, and I practice in Newport Beach, California. My practice name is Arata Medical. It is a metabolic medicine practice where we focus on the brain. The brain is our most important organ. It's the one we absolutely cannot do without. Everything starts with the brain. If you can get the brain working well, you can have good impact on virtually any condition or any organ system. And so that really has to be the focus, is establishing a well-functioning brain. Now, the interesting thing about that is, is that the brain is basically in this soup, this, this mix of various chemicals, and it's also an electrical organ. So we need to really try to understand what, what are the connections, if you will, from one aspect of the brain to the next. And are they communicating in a normal fashion, or are there certain blocks between those electrical um, events? And then look at the soup. So do we have a situation where there's nutritional deficiencies? That's something that we can correct by either diet, improving the diet, or with supplements. Is there a problem with hormones? And so we'll see as we all age, our hormones are going to shift, and that can come in two forms. We can become deficient, which we most people are familiar with the sex hormone, whether it's estrogen or testosterone. But the one hormone that actually increases as we age is cortisol. And cortisol is toxic to the brain. In addition, there's the ever-present agent of aging and ill health, and that's stress. I really can't say I've ever seen a patient that stress wasn't a factor. It may not necessarily be the cause of the problem, but it certainly played a role in both how they became ill and also in one of the factors that prevents them from getting better. So we really do focus a lot on stress. And then there's sleep. Sleep is so critical, particularly for the brain. If the brain doesn't have sleep time, it doesn't do its cleaning. It's, it's got to clean itself, and that actually happens while we sleep. So it's very important that we allow the, the brain to kind of do its housekeeping every day, or I should say every night, um, and make sure that, that we have good quality sleep. So we have patients that have uh, brain-related conditions such as dementia or depression, but we also have patients which have more metabolic conditions such as obesity. And uh, I approach obesity from the perspective of the brain, trying to optimize its function as a way to help the patient lose weight. Over one-third of the U.S. population are considered obese, while two-thirds are considered overweight. When you're obese, your physiology changes in a negative way that makes you at risk for a host of different disorders that can be life-threatening. There's really not a disease that I can think of that isn't made worse by obesity. And that can be cardiovascular disease, diabetes, cancer, Alzheimer's. The list just goes on and on. So my focus for obesity medicine is optimizing the brain first but recognizing that there's far more involved. So when we're uh, looking at what's going on with the brain, we, we can certainly do cognitive assessments. So we basically uh, have uh, patients go through a battery of different tests to look at the various subsystems of the brain in terms of the actual function. We also use uh, a system called quantitative EEG, and that's a way of uh, looking at the electrical activity uh, of the brain and see how well it's functioning. We will also on occasion use imaging. There's a type of imaging called SPECT. What's interesting about SPECT imaging is that it very much is telling you what's going on with regards to both blood flow and metabolism of the brain. And, and these are factors that really come into play when you start looking at other conditions of the body. So for example, atherosclerosis or cardiac conditions will obviously affect the blood flow to the brain and it can affect the function of the brain. And then if, with anything that we see within the body, there's, it's almost always bi-directional. So if you have abnormalities related to circulation that affect the brain, the brain in turn affects the circulation. And so when you're trying to get someone well, you really have to kind of look at all the systems. You can't just, you can't just be a neurologist or a cardiologist. The, the modern physician really is actually going to be less of a specialist and more of someone that has an appreciation of all the various organ systems and how they interact. For anyone interested in learning more about our practice, you're welcome to visit our website at erratamedical.com. We're also available by phone, and uh, we have uh, very interested and educated staff members who would love to hear from you. Uh, simply give us a call, and uh, we're there waiting to help you.